because I always get nervous when it's asked. Not that I'm afraid to share where I go, but because I just get nervous and I bungle it. And I'm like, oh, we go church Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> You are listening to Saints in the South. Hi, welcome everyone. This is season two, episode 73. We are Saints in the South, representing saints everywhere, and we are your source for gospel growth and good times. Don't forget to check us out on uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and be sure to hit those notifications, um, subscribes, and leave us some comments and reviews. We will greatly appreciate it. You can also do that on our website, saintsinthesouth.com. And please, if you would, uh, share. Share the episodes that, that we have going on. So we, uh, again, thank you for all the, the follows, the listens, and the views. And we're having a good time doing this and appreciate you all support. So this week we are in sections 60 through 62. All flesh is in mine hand. Uh, Andrew, what you got for us today? So they just dedicated in Missouri. And Joseph and a group of them gets on their canoes and wants to go back to Ohio. So they're on their canoes, and as they're traveling on the canoes, they're just uh, they're just seeing all kind of the waters there is just terrible, I guess. Even W.W. Phelps said he saw the destroyer. And then some of the guys were just misbehaving, and Oliver Calgary's like, if y'all don't watch out, y'all going to get accidents going to happen. Anyways, um, they camp out, had this wild turkey dinner, and I guess the spirit afterwards wasn't as strong, and they keep on canoeing, and they ended up hitting a tree or something and get off and start walking. And anyway, that night or the next day after that night, um, Joe Smith receives a revelation talking about the waters and all, and we'll talk more about that. But – there's beauty, I guess, in that story because um, they start walking back to Ohio and Joseph sees his brother Hiram and some others preaching the gospel and they're having success. So that lifted up Joseph Smith and the other brother and Oliver Calgary and others to see the success in their missionary experiences. And a fun fact, before they met, the Lord did promise earlier that they would rejoice in Missouri. So you got to think the disappointment in Missouri arriving there at first, a lot of disappointment, discouragement, but when they saw each other, um, they were happy and it, they were reminded of the Lord's promise that they would be uplifted and rejoicing. So I can imagine a lot of roller coaster of emotions during these, during these early periods of the church, you know, you know, things are going great. Lots of conversions going on, and then all of a sudden, things aren't going <laughs> really good, or people are leaving the church, or people start challenging the prophet. Yeah, you know, and so uh, I'm sure that that did uh, Brother Joseph uh, a lot of good uh, seeing the uh, success after after the disappointment in uh, in in Missouri there. Yeah, I think so for sure. See your brother too. Yeah, and so section sixty. Um, again, this is they just dedicated the land, and this revelation is actually given to the elders before they left. So, yeah, one of the uh, in the, in the very uh, first couple, first couple of uh, verses here, verse one: um, "Behold, thus saith the Lord unto the elders of His church, who are to return speedily to the land from whence they came. Behold, it pleases me that you have come up hither." But with some I am not well pleased, for they will not open their mouths, but they hide the talent which I have given unto them because of the fear of man. Woe unto such, for mine anger is kindled against them. Um, I think part of this as well, uh, getting back to Ezra Booth and his um, challenges, he gets to, you know, uh, Missouri there, Independence. He's disappointed in what's going on. He's finding fault with the, with the prophet. And so he, he's just ready to get back. Um, and, uh, and that's, that's all he's focused on. And so what I thought about that here and with him, not, not taking the time to, to slow down, to, to share the gospel, share his thoughts, to, you know, try and bring people, uh, into the church is that with us, a lot of times we're just focused on life. 
We're focused on the next task at hand. We're just focused on our work. We're focused on our responsibilities, family responsibilities. And so a lot of times we just don't think about opening our mouths when, when, when opportunities uh, present themselves. And so that was, I think, I think some of this, you know, some of them is probably, you know, true fear of man, you know, there's some persecution and everything going on. So they're, they are scared of what might happen, but as far as applying that to, to, to me in my life, you know, I'm not scared that somebody's going to, uh, you know, get angry with me and, you know, try and hurt me because I share the gospel. I just, a lot of times am focused on the, the daily task at hand and, and don't really think about sharing the gospel. So. And I think um, what it says in the, one of the manuals, um, it references Doctrine and Covenants 52.10, and it says, preach by the way. And I know their meaning as you are headed to your destination, you should be preaching. But I think for each one of us, preach by the way is definitely a preach by the way you're living. Be ready with what you need to be saying at the right time. I had an experience last week running through my neighborhood, like on purpose, exercise wise, wasn't just running like a weirdo. <laughs> well, it's probably at both, probably both, <laughs> both answers. But um, a lady who had moved in recently, and I just hadn't had a chance to like introduce myself. She's not near my house, but I knew they'd moved in. And I was, I'm always excited to meet somebody in the neighborhood just because I want my kids to say, we know this person, this is safe. This is the place you can go. I'm very big on that. Autism makes you question every person in your neighborhood. Like, are you a safe place in case my special kid needs help. Anyway, long story longer. Um, I introduced myself and as goes in the South, they brought up what church they go to, which is exciting. In the South, people do that all the time. Yeah. They, I've lived a lot of places and it doesn't happen as much other places, but she's like, well, do you have a home church is what a lot of people say. And I actually answered the question how I've always wanted to, because I always get nervous when it's asked. Not that I'm afraid to share where I go, but because I just get nervous and I bungle it. And I'm like, oh, we go church Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's never this confident. I go to this church and it's not a cult and I feel great about it. I get nervous. And so my own nervousness messes it up, but I actually did it right this time. And I went home and high fived myself. I'm like, <laughs> I said the full name of the church properly. I was completely unapologetic. I was like, you should come with us sometime. If you're interested, I said things that need to be said 41 years old. Very I did good. it. I finally did it. Congratulations. <laughs> but I think that's what they're saying. Preach by the way is have things ready to say at all times because you're not gonna it's never going to be a perfect circumstance you need to be ready to adapt your language to whatever circumstance you're in to bring up the gospel and i rarely even have to bring up the gospel here because people here love talking about whatever church they go to um i'm still talking sorry um so there's a quote that's attributed to frank St St. Francis of Sissy, which apparently he didn't actually say it, but we attribute it to him. Did a deep dive on pointless stuff this week. But preach the gospel at all times when necessary, use words is what's attributed to him, which is a great quote. But apparently what he actually said, it is no use walking anywhere to preach unless our walking is our preaching. And I thought to me, is that what the Lord was upset with these guys? They weren't using every opportunity to live the gospel in a way that people wanted to know more. Right. Just my thought. Very good. Like that. And I think it's interesting. Sorry, still talking. Oh, just on a roll now. Yeah, that, yeah, roll away. Protein pancakes have <laughs> hit, and I'm ready to talk about some yeah. stuff. I think what's interesting is when St. Francis said this, it was a pre-literate world. So most people weren't sitting around and unscrolling the scriptures and studying them the way we have such access to them. So the quote applies in a world where you had to actually walk the walk and talk the talk and live the gospel. But we live in a post-literate world where almost everybody reads, almost everybody has access to some sort of scriptural thing. But once again, what is the most effective way to share the gospel? It's in a pre-literate way to live the gospel so people can see, see what it does for you. I just thought that was interesting how we have the written word and it's amazing, but some people won't get there unless they see you see living it. it. Yeah. I love in verse 13, thou shalt not out away thy time, neither shalt thou bury thy talent, talent that it may not be known. So. I don't, there's, I think there's uh kind of getting back to what we said last week about, you know, being idle, you know, president Nelson talks about if he ever feels like he's just sitting there not doing anything, he's got to get up and get up and go. Um, and there's a, there's a good, 
I, you can be proactively idle, right? You can be actively meditating, you know, actively reading the scriptures. You don't actually have to be up doing and yeah. going and, and, and doing something. But as long as we, I think what it's getting to is, you know, don't, uh, don't fill your idle time with the, with the things of the, of the world, things that will drag us down, you know, bad rabbit holes and things like that. So, which is, which is the easiest time, you know, the, uh, uh, idle hands is the devil's workshop. Mm-hmm. Right. You ever heard yeah. that? That's true. So, and you never know what talents you, I mean, there's, there's people out there with plenty of talents. You just never know unless you try. I mean, right. how many people are great speakers, but have never given a talk? I mean, I, I think that's the beauty of our church is you turn what 11 and a half <laughs> and you're at the pulpit, but how many of these kids get an opportunity to speak into a microphone Otherwise, yeah. right. it's not a huge thing at school, but we have, uh, if we're going to build a church that's bold and able to speak of the gospel at any time, it doesn't just happen when you're 34 and suddenly it comes to you. Like, you have to practice these things. There's so many scripted conversations so that you just have an arsenal of things to pull from. And then the spirit can work with that even more. Yeah, I, I have to admit, I was pretty excited uh, whenever my son Brody was asked to speak recently at the general state priest meeting. And uh, so, and and I like that. I'm glad because of what you're talking about. I mean, it, uh, we, we have a unique opportunity for, for youth to be able to get up and start publicly speaking um, at, at an early age. And I think it's, it's really good, re- really effective uh, uh, training, worldly training. It really is, you know, to be able to, to, to utilize. Well, and they, um, everything now in the youth program now is like they have the adult presidents, but they don't defer to the youth president, but the youth president should be conducting all meetings. Right. Youth president are in training from the adult president to run things like the adult president is pretty much a supervisor if you are following the training the guidelines. Yeah. And I think it's really incredible to see the faith the Lord has in these youth. Like, it's like, this is how I want y'all to do it. And I'm giving it to you because I know you can, instead of, you know, we need all the adults to babysit these children. It's not that, it's not that at all. Right. Right. I like in verse, uh, verse three in section 61, uh, again, talking about them traveling on the, uh, on the river and trying to hurry up and get back to Kirtland, uh, verse three, but verily I say unto you that it is not needful for this whole company of mine elders to be moving swiftly upon the waters, whilst the inhabitants on either side are perishing in unbelief. And that gets back to what what we're talking about. You know, we're swiftly moving along in our life. We've got the gospel in our life, but we're not taking the, the, the opportunities and the time to slow down and to share it with others because everybody by us, you know, especially here here in the South. I mean, we have we have plenty of opportunities to to share the gospel with with people who aren't of the same faith. So, I think one of the best things about the South is you talk to people next to you in line. Like when I, my husband always talks about when we were in Utah together at BYU, how he was so surprised how people at the grocery store are just there to get groceries. They're not there to shoot the breeze while they're waiting in line. Here, I've talked to so many people. When I first moved to Tuscaloosa, I just remember making friends at the grocery store and being like, well, I hope I see you again someday (laughs) just because you're you're being friendly. But I think, you know, if we have that same, like that verse you just read, if that's our perspective, those are really great opportunities to just be friendly and kind. It's one of the most beautiful things about the South is everyone is your friend until you actually get to know them. <laughs> but, <laughs> but also you're already, already talking. Why not mention who you are, what you represent? Right. And you don't have to get baptized in the frozen food section. You know? That's right. And the world is moving so swiftly now. I mean, everything is fast food. I mean, as, as fast as you can go. I mean, from the, you know, example, picking your groceries up at the store, um, order them online. Just pop the hat. Pop the hat. <laughs> we ain't got to get out. You know, the person bringing it out, don't even, you know, yeah. you, you ain't got to talk to them. Right. You know, so I mean, everything is just so go, go, go. It's, uh, yeah, it's the greatest. So let's not talk bad yeah. about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. But uh, it's true. We almost have to be more conscious in our chances to talk to people because they're everything like self-checkout, that sort right, of thing, yeah. which self-checkout is my personal hell. It never worked. <laughs> but how many things have we automated that removes 
face-to-face contact and interaction, especially in the past year, how much did we miss seeing someone smile behind their mask? That changes a lot of Mm -hmm. things in your interaction. It's like texting with emojis. You don't know if that was a a sarcastic emoji. Having a conversation without seeing half your face is like texting with emojis. You don't know completely the intent from what you're saying. Yeah, try giving a talk in Sacrament, and all you see is people's eyes. Right. You're like, because a lot of times their face expressions right. you can gauge on right. how you know who to keep or making friendly. eye contact yes, with yeah. and who not to keep making. <laughs> <Who's asleep, laughs> right. yeah. How about in verse four? Uh, many dangers upon the waters. Do I need to take my boat back or what's up? <laughs> <laughs> so I know the river back then. That river was very dangerous and. Well, one of the reasons uh, I don't mean to interrupt you. You mentioned the the they, so they got what they called sawyers, and it's how they transported logs yeah. and everything. And they would they would throw them in the in the river and let let them go down the uh, uh, the river and to their to their destination and stuff. Yeah. So with the rough waters along with the logs made it made it really dangerous. And Joseph said a lot of people went paddling. They they just had a good night eating that wild turkey or whatever game whatever they're eating, and uh, a lot of people just went paddling and. There's just a lot of frustration, arguments, and end up hitting a tree or some kind of stump and end up getting off. But everyone went pulling their weight. But there's a misinterpretation about waters, you know, that, yes, you can get into waters, you know, just – Well, that's that's one of the (laughs) – that's one of the Sabbath day kind of things, you know. Hey, you want to swim on Sunday? You know, like, like, for example, here. Well, we've got we've got a little pool, you know. Kids want to go on the get in the pool on Sunday, you know. Can't do it on Sunday. Yeah. Satan's in that pool on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> He's right there waiting for you in, in, in that pool. He, you can't get in. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Well, you fishing I, for the devil. That's, That's right. what I heard. Fish, don't, you don't fish on Sunday. You fishing for the devil or something. That's I don't funny. know. Well, I think it's interesting how the Lord from the get go is like, be safe. Like, be safe. Water is unpredictable. And I think a lot of people conflate missionaries. They can't swim on their mission because the devil's in the water. I mean, that just seems like why would a missionary need to swim on their mission unless they're drowning because they fell off a boat? I mean, that's a stretch, right? right? So I think he's very conscious of how are you actually using your time? So we shouldn't think the devil's just lying in every puddle waiting to pull us by the ankle down into it. Yeah, I mean, Lord... Lord has power over waters, has power over, mm-hmm. over everything. So he's the uh, greatest, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. He made so, it all. Yeah. So there's a, again, and there's some history behind it, how they went paddling and it was just a dangerous river also. Yeah. I like uh, in verse 20 where the Lord is forgiving here. He says, I, the Lord was angry with you yesterday, but today my anger is turned away. Yeah. Yeah pretty quick yeah yeah again there was uh this revelation came about because they were they were showing out you know they were showing out but the lord forgave them you know yeah. and uh ww phelps who was setting up a printing shop there in independence the morning and evening star he actually printed this section out and called it risk and dangers oh really yes yeah, so a risk and danger section 61 so hmm. a lot of people read it they didn't read it as section 61 um, on their tablet or anything. <laughs> it was called risk and danger. That's fantastic though. That changes a lot of my perspective of how does that, how am I going to receive this risk yeah. and dangers? Like, well, am I, I think a lot of time and I've said this before and I don't even know if it's true, but I've said it before um, in the animal kingdom, every animal senses danger, including humans, but humans are the only ones that sense danger and press forward anyway. Yeah. And I think that's true. I think we hear stuff all the time. Like, Oh, that's risky. That's scary. Let's do yeah, it. That's right. That's like, right. I know a guy that was in a kayak with an AR-15 for shooting gators. It was Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Not with the intent yeah. to shoot gators, but there are gators. He was ready water. for it. Right? I was ready, baby. But <laughs> that's the life we live, though. I mean, yeah. there are alligators present in our town. Yeah. You know? Probably one behind think, this shop. <laughs> that's right. But if you, you know, you wouldn't get in the water, um, unprotected you wouldn't yeah, that's right and that's how we need to live our lives like what's the risk and danger of proceeding in this this next task we don't want to become a cautionary tale because we didn't heed the warning that's right um 
I like in verse 22 where the Lord uh, basically references the principle of, you know, not to be commanded in all things. Uh, again, they're traveling back. He says, and it mattereth not unto me after a little, if it so be that they feel their mission, whether they go by water or by land, let this be as it uh, made known unto them according to their judgments hereafter. So he says, it's, it's up to you, right? Mm-hmm. So getting back to making every decision in our, in our personal lives, you know, as long as you're, again, he says here, as long as you fulfill the mission, it doesn't matter whether you go by water or by land, just, just fulfill the mission. Right. And getting back to, to our personal lives, um, you know, it, every little step isn't going to be commanded, um, but live the gospel, fulfill your assignments, you know, magnify your callings and so forth. So, And be wise in how you get somewhere. Like, are you wasting time? Yeah. Because I think for a lot of us, we have so many things, especially like how I see my day. I like to have my day planned. Like this is my time period. Um, I always joke that I am mentally a lawyer because I like to have every six minutes because they bill every six minutes. I like to have my day every six minutes. What am I doing? So I have a task prepared. And if I mess that up, I'll have a whole day of nothing because I wasn't prepared to get a lot of things done that day. How did they settle on six minutes? I don't know, but they're an evil breed. So who knows? <laughs> Sign of the devil, 666. <laughs> My husband's a lawyer. <laughs> so she can say that. I can say all sorts of stuff. <laughs> I also didn't mention that the person with the AR-15 in his kayak dropped it in the water. But yeah. we can talk about that another yeah, day. That's another story for another day. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. It's a good story, though. Yeah. You retrieved it. I did. I did. Um. So there's risk and dangers and learning your learning the danger and getting off the boat. Cause again, what I mentioned earlier by them getting off the boat and recognizing the danger, they ended up rejoicing and seeing their brethren, their saints, you know, Hiram, you know, Joseph Hiram, imagine two brothers not seeing each other, not through texts or phones. I mean, all of a sudden you're walking, walking back to Ohio and you see your brother and, and well, it makes me think of book, the Book of Mormon when Alma and all his sons of Mazai. Yeah, I rejoicing. love that, and they're happy they're still faithful in the gospel. Because I've had that a few times where I've seen someone from like my childhood, and I'm so excited, and then they're still faithful in the gospel. There's no feeling like no. that. Yeah. Know that we're still on the boat together. Yeah, but water metaphors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so you know, get off the boat. When I say get off the boat, actually, the trend now is to stay on the boat. Yes. So I want to make sure you know, stay on the boat, but. President uh, Ballard. Yeah, yeah, President, yeah, yeah President Ballard his, says uh, it. I can't remember. Get on the boat. Talk. Yeah, yes. it's better than that. It's yeah, way better. Stay, than that. Yeah, yeah, way better. No. <laughs> stay, stay on, on the, the ship, Zion. Yeah, stay oh. on the boat on the land. Just don't get out of bed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is some of that hillbilly talk. Get yeah. on the boat. Yeah. Get on the boat, boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All our own teeth. Yeah. Um, but also, I think when you're saying, um, we talk about preach, by the way, and we talk a lot about fear. How many of these missionaries were letting the fear keeping them from preaching by the way because we're talking a lot about risk assessment i've got our insurance adjuster here um how many of these things inspire a feeling of danger and fear so we don't do it but they're actually not dangerous things and that's what the lord is displeased in like he's fine with us being scared to do stuff he knows how we were creative created he's like I know you have fear in you and that's fine, but how are you heeding it? Are you assessing the risk properly? Are you opening your mouth at the proper time? Are you letting yourself be so scared that you're not, you're being an unwise steward? Yeah, that's, I I love, I love that concept because anytime my kids say, but I'm scared, right? I said, that is fine. That's perfectly normal. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to be fearful, but don't let it paralyze you, right? Don't, as long as, as long as it's safe, right? And it's a, it's a good thing. Don't let it stop you from moving forward. Right. I've had to say, I said this to one of my kids this past week who was nervous about something like, that's fine. But here's the thing. If you don't do this, how will you feel? You, will mm-hmm. you feel like you missed out on something? Because yeah. to me, that's a huge motivator if I'm fr- afraid to do something. Like if I look back at this day and- Made, did not make the effort I should have for the task I wanted to do. I'm always disappointed in myself. I have to recognize, like, if I do this poorly, at least I tried. And half the time it works out okay. Yeah. 
And honestly, whenever uh, we were starting this podcast, the same same exact thoughts and feelings, you know, something that uh, that we wanted to do. Uh, but, you know, you got those fears, the, the thoughts, you know, if they don't go well, if people don't, you know, like it or whatever. It, But but you got to try. Mm-hmm. You got to try. Yeah. So. Move forward. I, I still remember your husband coming home from his mission, probably home just a week. And him and I went, my dad asked him to go home teaching with me. You know, my dad was bishop at the time. So Thomas and I went home teaching, went out in the woods here in the south, here in Westbury and all teaching, preaching, not preaching, teaching the, a home teaching lesson. And I remember asking your husband, now how was your mission? And he said, well, it was kind of like mowing a yard, a big old yard. Um, you kind of, it's a lot of work, a lot of effort, took some time, but after you finish honorably, you look at it and it's like, wow, this is great. This nice, fresh, good looking yard. So, you know, I always remembered that and stuck with me for years. Um, I like that analogy. Yeah. That's good. Very good. So does he cut his yard now? Um, a guy comes on Wednesdays <laughs> and he does it in 15 minutes yeah. with one of those huge that's, mowers and I yeah. feel great about it. <laughs> yeah, that's why right when, uh, when Amanda cuts our grass yeah. and yeah. everything. And that's, and that's why you can't live without her. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I, I you, that's right exactly. I'm nothing without her. But, uh, so six, um, section 62 verse three is one of my favorite scriptures. And, um, I'm reminded every time I bear my testimony, um, cause I'm a sinner, you know, but as I bear my testimony, it's recorded in heaven and sins are forgiven you. Nevertheless, ye are blessed for the testimony, which ye have borne in is recorded in heaven for the angels to look upon and they rejoice over you and your sins are forgiven you. I love that. Just every time you bear your testimony, preach the gospel, um, sharing your thoughts about the restored gospel, it's recorded. And, you know, sins, I look at it real simple, like a, a sin's taken away, you know, just, and I blame me, I sin all the time. So you better, you better keep bearing <laughs> testimony. <laughs> there, yeah. yeah. Play this video a hundred times. <laughs> and what a willing and loving father who has a system like, He's so excited for every progression we do. He's so excited. He wants, he wants to forgive us. He's given a plan that allows that to happen all the time. He's not, there's not like, here's the day you can repent and it's got to be horrible. It's no, you get to, you say these good things. I'm helping you out. Yeah. I love sure. that. Yeah. And, and this comes from them seeing Hiram and the other brethren, how happy they were, you know, rejoicing. I mean, they were rejoicing and telling these successful missionary experiences and stories. And, and Joe Smith receives this revelation right after that, you know. So I've got a uh, personal experience with uh, verses seven, eight, and nine in this section. Several years ago, um, I was really, really kind of struggling and down on, on my career path. Uh, for everybody out there, my career path just kind of ended up being what it is. It wasn't something that I, you know, set on the track on. And I feel on, the same yeah, way. Plan- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I planned on, uh, you know, being in the insurance world, but that, that's where I, that's where I ended up. And so, I was really trying to figure out: do I, do I leave the industry? Do I stay on this path? Uh, you know, do I, do I go and do something else that's more appealing to me? Something more of, of, of what I want to do. And, uh, so I was in the Atlanta temple and I'm pondering this question and thinking about it. And as, as well as on a business trip with, uh, you know, with, with the insurance company up, up in Atlanta, uh, anyway, so I come across and again, this is a situation as I'm just flipping through the scriptures, just kind of looking and, uh, and, and then for whatever reason, I, I landed on this here. It says, I, the Lord am willing, if any among you desire to ride upon horses, or upon mules, or in chariots, he shall receive this blessing, if he receive it from the from the hand of the Lord with a thankful heart in all things. These things remain with you to do according to judgment and the directions of the Spirit. Behold, the kingdom is yours, and behold, and lo, I am with the faithful always, even so. Amen. So, the answer to me was, it's it's your decision. You you know, I'm not going to tell you what 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 you need to do with your career. Uh, you know, there's many great careers out there. There's many great things to do. Um, and, and I got that from, you know, there's horses, there's mules, there's chariots, there, there's all kind of options out there, right? You decide what you do as long as you do it, you know, w- with a faithful heart and a faithful mind, 
and and the blessings will be there. And uh, it was a it was a true comforting feeling to 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 kind of ha- have that have that personal experience. And here I am, almost twenty years later, still uh, still still doing what, what what I was doing back then and everything. So anyway, that's cool how you applied that. Yeah, you know, locking the scripture to yourself. Yeah. You know, that's neat. I do like how they say several times or the Lord says several times congregations of the wicked, not the best PR tactic. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> like we aren't to say that when we address other people, but he's pretty clear, like who's his church. Yeah. Which I like that. Yeah. That's but cool. you know, my brother had a mission companion. He was in San Francisco and he wanted to stand on the street corners and shout at people. No one likes that. Like, no. does that appeal to you when you hear someone shouting on a street corner? Like, I'd like to know more. Tell me about how wicked I am. So I think the Lord is very PR savvy, but he also says what he needs to say. Uh, yeah, I, with that, I've uh, I thought about that as reading, you know, I mean, that's it's really it's, it's harsh. I mean, I mean, that's a that's a that's a strong way to to to, to come down. I mean, could he um, come up to Waycross first and second and say the th- same thing? Be like this congregation of the wicked. That's right. Yeah. Some days, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Well, uh, anything else? Y'all good? Okay. All right. Well, there you go. Sections sixty through sixty-two and episode seventy-three in the books. Until next time, y'all keep on striving. Come on, give me a down now. Well, Dad, as me pull out the guitar and just do it. There you go.